The VSL is only as good as it needs to be to get tested, okay? All I changed to get it to work wasn't even the VSL, it was the ads. Yeah, whenever you guys have a question, feel free to go, we'll help each other out. Yeah, Sweet. I, yeah I, I just had a, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I, um, yeah, no, I just had a quick question for, for Brian and the community. Um, I know, you know, a lot of us are probably on school. Um, I got a, I moved over my Facebook group, like my public free group over to school. Uh, it's called OPM Secrets. And uh, so I've been thinking about, you know, charging because I, I want to start an MRR and I actually want to compete in school games too, because I, I just like competing. Um, and so I've been thinking about, so there's about 263 people in there right now. I've taken some of my paid course. I've put it in there, right? Uh, just like the school community teaches. And so I got 263, but I've been thinking about maybe doing a one weekly call for this group and then charging maybe 97 a month, maybe 199 a month, and just starting to start building some reoccurring revenue, right? For uh, just having something like that. Um, so I, I just wanted your your take on that. Uh, I, know, I, I know that some people say don't do it. I've talked to, uh, what's his name? Um, the guy who's also managing school there, I forgot the guy's name. Uh, he works with Alex Hormozy and Sam Ovens. Did? Yeah. Who? Sid, the community manager? Wait, no, no, not Sid. Uh, the other uh, Andrew Kirby. Who? Kirby. Kirby, yes, yes. Yeah, Andrew Kirby. Andrew Kirby. So he says, you know what? If you have a high ticket offer, don't charge, like keep your school community free. But I know some other creators, they they just have it because I said it just usually makes a better, you know, when they do upsell them eventually, like they, they find people that are paying something, they're just they're better quality. Uh, but I'm I don't want to cannibalize my my higher ticket offer, right? Where if I'm doing one call a week like this, maybe, and they have some of my courses, you know, they're like, Well, why should I join your higher ticket if I'm kind of getting that value here? Right. So um, yeah, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Why do you want to do a low ticket recurring right now? Just to have have some additional lower ticket, like just some revenue, some MRR, right, coming in because I don't have any of any of that right now. I just have our high ticket. That that's really it. That that's the main reason too. And and I mean, as time grows, like let's say you know two hundred turns into five hundred to a thousand, uh, and it's more so for people that you know because most people don't buy, right? Most people don't buy. Uh, so it would be a place where I can plug them into and just, just like an email list, keep them warm, but then also charge a small MRR. Yeah. Trust me. I get that. I think the question comes back to what's going to give you the highest ROI, the quickest. And for everything you add to your business, there's a focus cost, right? And like, you, you know, this working with Sam and Sam, Sam's notorious for this. This is why Sam was always hyper obsessed with like focus and one thing, one thing. And it's true because Yes, you could add this free school community or change it to a monthly recurring, and that could get you a little bit of MRR. You know, mm -hmm. how much of that would actually result in like a significant amount compared to your high ticket thing? That's sure. to be decided. But if you just got this paid ad system working and you were closing more deals for 6K, uh, at least three to four or five a week, right? You would be making the money you want and not have to worry about this other group that you have to manage and do calls for that are paying you maybe a thousand dollars a month. Right. Sure. And again, it's like, it's just about, it's not, it's not like the question isn't, should you do it? Like, yes, you will have to do it eventually. If you want to build a long-term business in this space and have it for not just a year, two years, but like five, 10 years, like, of course, but it's about the focus of when it makes sense. In my opinion, the timing doesn't make sense for you to do it right now. And many of us to do it right now, even me. Like I would love to convert my free school group to a paid community and downsell it instead of having like a course. But it's like, okay, to do that and manage that is like a lot. Whereas like the system that's working for us the best is YouTube ads, high ticket offer, you know, like, and then like, it's just optimizing that system first to maximize every single piece of that by percentages each step of the way to get the most out of it, which is what most people don't do. And as a result, they just do a bunch of things and they don't get anything really working as a system that's really good. That's really good. So I would say again, like I, I get the recurring thing, but if you had, the question I would ask myself is if I had a paid ad system that was getting me a consistent 10 to 12 clients per month, paying me 6K plus, you know, would I even want to worry about the recurring at that point? Not at all. <laughs> that's the, yeah, not at all. I wouldn't worry about, I wouldn't care. Yeah, exactly. So again, this, this, this is already hard enough is what I'm saying. Like this, yeah. Ads, getting getting one ad to be to be an ad that gets you consistent leads and calls 
that can become qualified that you can close and all those pieces in between is already hard enough, right? Like sure. that's already hard enough. So to add this other element of down sales and then like recurring and then another call, it's like, you only have so much focus on top oh, of for sure. you're doing the deals too. So it's like, I, I would say yes later, but not until you're, you know, not until you're at a, a consistent, you know, hundred K plus months in my opinion. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's one of the reasons I've been, I, my wife and I decided to divest some of our real estate. Cause I mean, even though it makes money cash flow, like it, it diverts my time. And, uh, I mean, I'm in it, I learned it and, but I'm, you know, I'm divesting so I can, I can focus more on prosper path, which is, you know, teaching others, uh, to do the same. So, and I can, I can put the, those, uh, that money in ads as well. Yeah. I've yes. come with the same thought process and Brian took me out of it quite hardly early on in the journey. And it makes sense because I started that as well. So consuming with your time uh, mm -hmm. and energy, you know, so the commitment you have to make to it. It is so high, you know, and, and it makes sense. I heard Alex and Mosey saying this as well, the other yourself saying, look, the quickest way to get rich is find rich people and charge them bigger tickets. And he said, even well, with school, you're still not earning money at $100 a month because of the infrastructure. So that's what you do when you're hitting the, the bigger revenues. So, yeah, I was set on that. I'd like the idea of that reoccurring revenue. And, and I'll start off. And Brian really persuaded me quite hardly to say, I think you should pivot from this. And I was like, okay, look, I'm just going to follow it because what's the point of hiring a mentor and listening to him and doing what you was already doing. And, and I'm already realized it made sense because I already started it a little bit and I was like, wow, there's a big commitment here and the fall off and what you have to do to keep them engaged. So yeah. And the I'll churn back, rate, back. I have no idea. Like, uh, yeah. 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 Like it always sounds good in, until you actually see the behind the scenes and yeah, churn rate management, and then you're getting paid the same amount you would get paid for, Couple, couple couple high ticket clients anyways 100 yeah. yeah i want to add on to that also because I, I i was running what you're saying like having a high ticket with a low ticket thing like you're saying um and i a big objection i'd get in the calls was you know what i'm gonna just i'm gonna just join your low ticket and see the results i get from that so that's a obje objection that came up a lot so that's why i just shut it down as a whole that's that's awesome man yeah that's good is, is that also with like a low ticket like this digital have you got any did you keep any low ticket digital courses as, as well or just completely no so i i was just running a, a low ticket like basically what he said like one call a week just doing that and people would i i'd hop on sales calls they're qualified they're like honestly bro um for the price i'm i just want to see how i i go with your lower ticket offer and then they just do that and hop off the call and i get no sale so yeah, you could get you could stack up a little MRR, but that might that having that offer might talk somebody out of one close, and that one close is going to make you more than that MRR you make it every month. Yeah, and then it just splits your focus on the sales call too, because then you're trying to qualify people for this or for that, and it's like you're not getting good at selling that one thing that's gonna that's gonna be the thing that gets you to 100k plus months consistently, anyways. So it's like it's just a it's just again, it sounds like a good idea, but it's just not yeah, for sure and it's more of a like man i'm like i'm seeing school games i'm seeing the leaderboards and they, it. yeah it's fomo you're yeah. you feel like you're missing out yeah you're like man, 50k reoccurring and passive income yeah, but the biggest guys that are doing guess what the biggest guys that are making the most money there they have the biggest audiences anyways that they built up yeah. over the last five ten for years sure. on yeah. Media. yeah like Hamza, there's nobody there's no one doing that with like no audience everyone that's doing that kind of money has a huge audience already who yeah. never made money from that audience and now they're finally cashing in because they have an easy way to get people to pay a low ticket subscription. It's not, if you don't have an audience, you're not making 40 K a month recurring from that. I can guarantee you. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I have a question for you, uh, Brian. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's just about the program mainly how, so I, you know, I recently joined a week ago. How long should I be spending in the VSL process before we go into recording and scripting ads? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, uh, <laughs> Joe, did you say something? I'm not right? laughing at you, Ethan. I'm laughing at me. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Brian. How how would you like to answer that? I'm, I'm all ears. So here's the, here's the reality, right? The expectation for the VSL. There's the, the, I've I've learned now how to teach the VSL, and this is a training that I will be releasing next week because the VSL is only as good as it needs to be to get tested. Okay, so for example, I've tested three VSLs in the last five months, six months for this offer that you guys are currently in, spent $113,000 $113, 
on the third VS or basically the majority being on the third VSL. All I and, and it's working, but it wasn't working before. Now, all I changed to get it to work wasn't even the VSL, it was the ads. So what I share that with you to say that, like, okay, I've tested three VSLs, right? And now it's finally working on the third variation, but it didn't work because I the, th the third VSL was better. It worked because the ads on the front end were better. So yeah. what I'm saying is you just need to get a you just need to get a, a, a core control VSL that's five, 10, maybe 15 minutes max that just simply follows a framework that we give you in the program. Mm. And then maybe seven, seven to 10 days to produce it in terms of writing it, filming it, editing it, and then having it ready to run. Right. That okay. way you're not obsessing over it because we're all, we can always get in our own head of it's not perfect. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. The reality is it's never going to be perfect. We just got to see what the conversion rate is after we've launched the ads and where the bottleneck needs to be optimized next. Right? Yeah. So a good rule of thumb is like, you know, I always reference my good friend, Cole Gordon, who's, who's notorious for telling people this. And I always love to use his story because now I'm on that same trajectory, but for him, he tested six VSLs. And the, the sixth one finally was the one that took him to a million a month. So get the first one up. Let's see how it performs in terms of conversion rates. And then if we need to redo it, we will. It's just, this is the testing yeah. process. It's not always going to work after the first time. So seven to 10 days is, is really all you need. And I think right okay. now you have your second review with Israel. So you should be fine. Yeah, yeah. I just started the reviews and he's been critiquing me um, very well. So I was just wondering how much time I should spend on or on that till he even accepts it because I can't make the VSL until he accepts it, right? Uh, well, you, well, yeah. We, you want us to approve it first. You have the best chance of possible okay. success. When the okay. That's what I'm just trying to do right now because, I mean, I have no client acquisition stuff going on right now because my Instagram ads got shut down. So I'm just trying to get everything going. No, as soon as possible. Did uh, your your Instagram got banned? Uh, the account isn't, but the ads are. Um, yeah, oh, so it sucks because they, they just raised my ad spend. Like I, I was, like the week they raised my ad spend, I was like, bet I started doing a thousand dollars a day. Started doing that, and they got banned like three days after. Um, you should talk to um. Hold on, let me just someone someone happened to I think Ollie had this happen to him as well inside the program. His uh his Instagram got his Instagram ads got banned or something. Yeah. Um, here, I'm going to send this, this post to you inside the community. If, okay, if, if any of you ever run into issues with Facebook ads getting banned, you should just read this post in the community, uh, and, and DM this guy on telegram. Um, he helped me get my Facebook ads account unbanned and my ads approved oh, wow. and everything. I just paid him. I mean, you just got to pay him honestly. Cause yeah, he worked, I, yeah, well, he worked for Facebook, but, uh, he doesn't tell you that, nor will he ever <laughs> say that, but. Um, you just pay them and he get, so we got banned because we were literally throwing stones at Facebook ads. Cause we do YouTube ads. And so they <laughs> we banned everything. They banned my business manager. They banned my ads account. They banned my, 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 my page. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to be able to run Facebook ads. Well, I just paid him. Like, I think it was like two or three K or something. I don't know what the, what the Perfect, purpose is yeah. anymore. And then he got it lifted within like 72 hours. It was, it was really sick. But, but, but to, until that works, dude, what I would be doing for you is I would be going hard on your organic content and your email list. So like, you know, ads will, ads will work to get you leads and calls, but it can never supplement organic. So you always want to continue that organic uh, presence as well. So, so what are you doing for organic? Yeah. So I'm doing about three YouTube videos a week right now. I just hired an editor. So I'm doing one vlog because I, I I'm traveling pretty often. So I make sure to record a vlog in each country I go to. Um, so that, that's just meant for warming up the audience, not really getting any sales or anything. And then I have two videos per week for like value. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well then making sure, just making sure you're, you're keeping that, that, that consistent and then just making offers is, is the big thing. So yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Sweet. Thank you. Yep. Yo, Brian. What's up, dude? <clears throat> How you been? Um, so I'll, I'll go quick because um, I don't really have too many questions, but I was just wondering because the last couple of weeks for our business, things have been really slow. And I'm not sure if it's a lull because of like the season or if like there's offer fatigue or, or things like that. Cause everything else is the same, but the revenue has like basically like zero. Um, and I could show you the numbers. Sure. But um, I'm just wondering like why, and I can show you the data and everything. Um, 
but yeah. Yeah, it's well. Have you done anything different? No, everything's the same. Like we're still we're still running our organic the same. Um, we introduced the ads uh, as well. We're still getting the same amount of opt-ins, the same amount of views on the VSL, the same amount of uh, people getting to like the the sales, the checkout page. Everything is the same. It's, it's just revenue has dipped. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Can you show me the data? Yeah. And this is all just like basically from organic right now still, right? It's all still organic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me know where you could see this. I can see your screen. Yeah. I'm just. Okay. Just get it up. <clears throat> so. The dip started somewhere here in May. Like you can see, this is our last last eleven days, or yeah. Um, but the, the well, data from the eleventh to this to the sixteenth till today is, uh, like I think we've had two sales, <clears throat> or three sales. Uh, okay, so basically, you're basing the dip off of since May second. Is that correct? Yeah, like this highlighted area here. Well, let me ask you this: Last May, what 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 was the performance <clears throat> compared to last May, May 2023? Like, where where would your sales be in May? Of yeah, so that's the thing. May 2023, we weren't running the same offer, and we weren't running like uh, it was like a whole different. We had like at this point now. We have like 300,000 more followers and then we were running like a $47 um, offer. So, but things weren't doing well in, in May, 2023 either. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I probably need to dive deeper into this, but it just seems like it, it's not a huge issue yet. Right. Because it's been, what is it? <clears throat> 16 days in May so far. You're still getting days where you're getting a thousand plus in terms of sales. I can see right here, like on May sixth, it seems, and then May tenth. Yeah, like, yeah. So there have been a few sales where there have been a few days where you're just making like one or two sales, but yeah, I don't know if it's enough to say, oh, like, you know, what should we do yet? Um, okay. Let me ask you this, like what's the cadence right now of making these offers? So, you know, have you, are you still posting the consistent amount of YouTube videos? Are you still emailing the list every single day or what do you do? Yeah. So we're still, so it's twice a day on our main Instagram page, uh, once a day on our backup and then three times a day on our other account. Um, that's still the same. Our YouTube has, it's been once a week. Um, that has, it's been like on and off, but, um that wasn't really a big revenue driver before um and then emails are being sent out as well so that's why i'm kind of stumped because everything is the same in terms of like our sales process uh, our output everything it's just a dip in revenue and you can see I'm here like yeah go ahead in uh in april we were doing like maybe like a thousand a day on average Mm hmm Okay. And then so far, how how much are you training for May so far a dip on day for average? Let's just look at the sum. Sorry? Go to May from May 1st to, to where to where you're at now. What are you tracking to be? So let's see. Go, yeah, do the do the sum calculation. May first to the eleventh is and so you're doing about yeah, I get to be on track to do about half of that. Um I mean it's not well, let's look at what you can do, right? So, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe it's a seasonal thing. You said last year that the offers were different. In May, it was also slower. Maybe it's a seasonality thing. I, I don't know. I mean, is is it that? Maybe, but... Do you, you think know. it's because people just pay taxes and they're, like, a little uh, stressed, out, stressed out about their funds, maybe? Nah, because our audience is kids, right? So oh, okay. They're eight, yeah, they're, they're kids that are trying to get into a professional soccer team. Yeah, so oh. I, I like around this time, the season, the football season, like the the football season is starting to end in a lot of places. So that's mm -hmm. something that I was thinking. 
um because we had a similar a similar a similar lull in sales during uh spring break uh like around this time here in march Mm, interesting. but Yeah, I would um I would just keep track of this, Sabas, and I would say, okay, in, in spring and in the start of summer, it seems like there's a little bit of a lull. But here's how I would attack this. I would use it to my advantage and I would use it as an angle to test in my marketing. Because if you're saying that football season's ending, and maybe there's less urgency to do this because there's no chance. I mean, there's there's no reason to get better because there's no chance they can try out and and join a team, right? I would say That's what I would be using in my messaging to create urgency and scarcity and say, now's the time where most people who get signed by a professional academy are taking their training seriously when football season's over, when everyone else is done for the season and they're just going to go relax and do vacation. This is how I was able to, you know, boom, 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 success story, study, case study, case study of clients and success stories of students who've also done this. Yeah. And I would just blast your list with that message. to get the sales back up in spring and May, if that's the case, All right, I would turn it into the, to a positive. So that way it's just sustainable and more consistent all throughout those slower seasons, if it's a slower season, but I don't know if it is, it just seems like it's, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a lo lesser start, but you know, if June comes around and you're having better results, it could just be a, a month, you know, everyone, everyone has bad months in business. Gotcha. Okay. So don't need to stress that. Well, I mean, dude, it's like business is, you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not a moonshot every single, like, you know, like it's, it's going to be, it's going to be regressions. So I don't think every month is, you know, people can say I'm doing consistent 30 K months or whatever, but it's like, well, when you look at the revenue, it's really not consistent 30 K months. Most of the time, when you look in the data, it's never usually that. Right. So I would say the one thing you can control though, is I would use that as an angle in my marketing to get the list and my audience primed to be able to buy this now instead of instead of waiting on it. If it's a true seasonal thing, that's how I would attack it. And then test it, right? See what the sales turn out to be as you start flipping the script on it. I see. Gotcha. Okay. How often are you emailing your list? Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, three times a week. How many of you guys email your list daily? Does anyone email their list daily? No? I'm lucky if uh, it's twice a week. I was I don't doing think... daily. I'm stuck in writing fucking Yeah. 300 emails a month for clients right now. Yeah. <laughs> There's one thing I can say definitively, and this is also, I, I want to almost hold us all accountable to doing this because since I had my little, uh, thankfully, I'm my skin's all cleared up now, which is really good because I've been by the beach. But um, we should all just email our, our list daily. Like, there's you just make more money. Like I, I've I've tested this since the beginning of J January, and we had our best months in February, March, and uh, and April as a result. Like of just emailing consistent daily. So like, What are you what are you emailing them like? yeah, I'm gonna create a training on it. That's the thing. I, I know that's the that's the question. What do I email them? What should I say? And so. Let me just create a training on it because I have it all on ClickUp and I have the frameworks for you guys. But it's it's very simple. It's just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll. What if we did this? What if next collab call I just walk you through how to do that daily and I just make it a training? Would that be Would that be interesting to you guys? I'd be down. Yeah, for sure. Okay, because. In my mind, I don't know if others think like this. I, I just feel like if, if I'm emailing my list daily, they're just going to like start unsubscribing, right? Like, man, I'm getting bombarded with emails. Or is that the case or no? Or is that just in my mind, in my head? I mean, yes, but they probably wouldn't be buying from you anyways. And mm. I, I've only seen it help. And I, again, I learned this from, from Cole Gordon, who's like, we, email, we, we, we had that same belief of like, Yeah. three emails per week and then when we started emailing our list daily we just made more money so like Wow. it depends on what your goal is right obviously you don't want to tap the list every day i'm not saying emailing them and saying buy now every single day right like it's not going to work uh but the way you you cadence the emails the way i've done it and the way i learned it as well is like you make them valuable and then you have two soft ctas throughout the week two hard ctas throughout the week And then two just straight value posts without any CTAs. Mm -hmm. And then the other one's more of a, a free flow, which I'll talk about in, in the next call. 
So it's yeah. not every single day, pitch, 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 pitch. Oh, fuck this guy. I'm off. No, it's like, oh, oh, he's actually a cool guy. He's telling me more about his life. So I'm getting to learn more about him. And this is what nurtures the people and moves them from the buyer's journey. Because again, we have to remember, right? Like the marketing is not everyone's going to buy today. It's, it's, it's people are going to buy like when they're ready to buy. And so the buyer's journey is, uh, let me just show you buyer's triangle, just to go back to how we move people through um, this, for example. So if I pull this up and I show you guys how this works, this is why emails on a daily basis will help. Out of the market that you're serving to, especially from ads, when you run cold ads, right? Paid traffic ads. There's going to be 3% of people, meaning three out of 100 leads who are ready to buy right now that you get on the phone with if they book a call. And you might close one of those three, right? Because out of 100 leads, you know, let's say however many book a call, out of the three that are actually interested and ready to buy right now, you close one. But then there's 7% of people that are like open to buying to it. And you got to, you know, do the sales process, make sure they're good to go. But the whole point of daily emails and content is to move people who are, they're not really thinking about it to open to buying it. And then from open to buying it to buying now. So the daily emails are just moving people from here to here to here. But as you saw in my HubSpot, right? Like our average deal flow, if I go back to deals here, is for example, like, you know, 15K, right? Like 15K, or sorry, uh, 93, 93 days which means that I know that on average, it takes about 90 days for us to close people who come in as a lead right here, move them to here, and then move them here. So my daily emails are just making sure that I can move them from here to here as quick as possible. And then again, I'm also sending them valuable content like my YouTube videos, where I'm actually teaching them something, and then they're consuming more content from me in video format, which then gets them more warmed up to buy. So I, I would almost wanna challenge us to do daily emails as a, as a community and see how much more money we can squeeze from our list. Because there's going to be a lot of people that are here that you can move here and here faster. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, you know what they say, like obscurity is the bane of any business and not emailing daily leaves you in obscurity because they get a flood of emails anyways. And you can even look at your open rate and go like, okay, I'm only getting 20% to open anyways. Yeah. So one out of five are really either maybe not even see like the, the four out of five who open that up, like are not, maybe not even seeing that email, you know? <laughs> so it's like you email three times a week and it's like, you do the math and you're like, okay, if I hit seven times a week, I'm almost guaranteed to add that one out of five to get all five people to open up by the end of the week, at least one email. So I'm you're not, and, and, and any email you send anyways, like the very nature of it, you're always going to get an unsubscribe. <laughs> you you like you look at your unsubscribe rate. You always have an unsubscribe rate for every email you send, but that's the whole purpose of continuing to have your pipeline being filled up all the time. You're yeah. just making sure that your pipeline is being filled up faster than your email list is being you know deleted. That's and what... we're all we're all here, and we pay Brian, you know, and Brian emails us every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I got to get back to it. So now I want to I want to challenge us to do it together as a community because, yeah, like Roy just said, you. When, when you die as a business is when you don't get new leads in, right? So you need new leads. But then the problem is only 3% of those people are ready to buy right now, which means you have to sell the other 7% who are open to buying now, but you got to sell them. And you got to move the other 30% who are, you know, not really interested, not really ready to buy, but you can convince them with emails, content, and nurturing, which means email marketing daily is just going to help that. And then YouTube videos, which is going to get them to know I can trust you faster. And then obviously help when I'm on a sales call with you. All of these things create the system to be a profitable paid ads, you know, acquisition for your business to grow past seven figure months. So how do you best replenish your email list? Uh, I must admit, one of the things that's put me off a little bit with emails in the past is the open rate. I think well, if I spend this amount of time creating a reel, for example, I'm going to get so much more, more of a reach and a response rate in comparison to writing the emails. So it's just like return on my time invested. But to keep on replenishing the email list what 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 do you do with that is that just straight lead magnets like without offers and just trying to bring them in like how regular should you be doing that organically as well kind of thing yeah good question so well ads ads are going to be the quickest way to grow your list because you're paying for leads right and then besides that all of us have organic presence in some capacity my lead magnet was my free school community 
when someone joins the free school community, they get added to our list. And the school community offer obviously operates as like an email list because you can blast them there too. But it really just whatever you have, like you can have a free lead magnet, you can have whatever that is. Um, but yeah, you always want to be feeding more people into the list. So for you, Harvey, you know, you could give them a free resource in a way. Um, but the I would, I would, I would just say, I don't know if that's I don't know if you need to replenish it. I, I would bet. Your everyone's highest ROI activity right here is not adding more people by like doing some lead magnet stuff. It would just be emailing it consistently more and, and just building a relationship with these people to move them through the buyer's journey faster. I think that's the biggest thing that most people struggle with from what I've seen, because I, I, I was struggling with this myself. And when I started doing daily email, I saw the, the benefits over 90 days of just boom, just record, record month, record month. Right. But then ads are the quickest way to replenish your email list and feed new leads in there and walk them through that buyer's journey. So spending money on ads, as opposed to like, you know, creating a lead magnet. If your content strategy allows you to do one of those, you know, CTAs to, to get them on your list per week, for sure. But all I want is, all I'm communicating is like, as opposed to getting new leads on, which ads are going to help you do, let's just focus on emailing the list consistently first. So that way when someone comes on, Right after they go through the autoresponders, they get on the the main email list, and now you're just hitting them daily. And then it's like, man, yeah, are I, you, read, are you, I read all your emails. Are you taking some of those emails and sharing those like that same content in your free school group? I, I literally repurpose everything from my email list. Yeah, yeah. So I don't write more than one thing for each platform. I write one thing and then repurpose it on every platform. Like like your email, you'll repurpose it where? Like on school? Where else? Yep. I'll purpose on school. I'll purpose it on uh, my YouTube community page. If I have a YouTube channel. Right. Okay, so yeah. like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just you had a, remember, remember last year we had a training on this. Yep. I had a training on this somewhere. Yeah, I think it, was, it, it was really helpful and like very eye opening to be like, Oh, just one piece of content works for everything. Yeah. Um, personal branding blitz. Yeah. It's this, it was the, it was the personal branding blitz basically like how you write one email and then you per you you repurpose it across every platform. And I created this little uh, Google Doc. Yeah, basically mm -hmm. one piece of content, and you redistribute it across social media. So if I show you guys what this looks like, this was let's see here. Yeah, I write my email. I per I publish it on my Facebook profile. I make a Twitter thread about it. I post it as an Instagram post, and then I post it on my YouTube uh, organic community post right here. So I'm hitting it everywhere on every social media, but it just takes me one hour a day because I'm writing for 30 minutes, basically publishing it for 30 minutes on all these platforms. And then you can get a VA to do that too, as you, as you grow it, but like you shouldn't automate it or delegate it until you can get it done manually yourself first. Mm. And that, 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 that makes it really easy for everyone here because everyone has all these other platforms. And like the biggest thing that I see people struggling with, including myself was what do I write for all these platforms? That's not the question. The question is, how do I scale the one thing that I write on all these platforms? Which is one piece that creates a bunch of content. Uh, I've been doing it slightly in reverse to that, just to share with other people, because I'm not great at writing. I'm dyslexic, so sitting down and writing is, is a very dis difficult thing. I'm not full on dyslexic where I can't read anything or spell anything, but it's not my best form of communication. But I've been creating reels, reels creating, sitting in front of a camera and speaking is easy for me. So I've been taking my reels and I've been putting them in, I've been just transcribing them and putting them into then chat GTP to make like blogs, emails, and stuff of it. And it don't, it don't spit out perfectly, but it spits it out good enough for you to just to tweak it a little bit uh, with the right prompting to tweak it a little bit. And then I'm finding that's where we're getting our emails and all that stuff off it. For So I'm doing the same sort of thing, creating one piece of content, but then using using like ChatGTP to then rewrite that for all the different platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like the, the goal of this is just to squeeze more out of your current list, but you do have to be feeding with new people, but the ads are what's going to allow you to do that faster, right? Like ads are what feeds your list to grow more, more email marketing. But I'll, I'll, I'll do a training on that next week. I was wondering if any of you guys have had this issue with Stripe. I'm going to share my screen uh, again, where like they just block a whole bunch of payments. Holy shit. 
So like this is the same person a few oh, times, but oh. like over the last like just in May, we've had like over a hundred thousand dollars blocked. Oh my god. What the uh, fuck? Have you thought about uh have you heard of the payment processor Easy Pay? No. We just use They're, Stripe uh, like links. It just integrates with everything. Nicely. Could also, I just put out a post on Stripe being like, don't use Stripe? <laughs> yeah. Um, Easy Pay is a different payment processor. It's an it's a actual legit one. Like you have to send in a whole bunch of stuff about your business. It takes about like one, two weeks to get approved. But they're a way better payment processor. And you could send payment links as well. Is it is it just basically like Stripe, just a different? Uh... <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. But they're a, like a legit one. Yeah. Um, they're not going to have all these issues Stripe has. And then um, I forgot which big guru it was. It might have been Jeremy Miner, but uh, they uh, left Stripe and then went to Easy Pay and like uh, made a whole testimonial about it. Just look it up on Google, Easy Pay. I think Easy Pay or Easy Pay Direct. Um, yeah, and then Easy you can Pay watch Direct. like videos. Yeah. What's their uh, processing fee? Same as Stripe. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Because. That was another thing that I think contributed to the to the drop in revenue, but they just came out of nowhere. Like all these block payments. In, bro, in you fix that one issue, bro. Your 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 business makes a hundred thousand dollars. So like that that's the <laughs> that's the thing you should focus on for sure. You that's didn't true. mention that earlier. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it just slipped my mind for some reason. Yeah, you fix that one thing, you'd probably be in a better position because that. That guy's trying to pay you money and it's just not letting him. So yeah, easy. It's inevitable. People have to switch from Stripe. We haven't had to. We're good. We're probably going to in the future. We've never had issues like this, but it's 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 when you scale your business, you're gonna have to go from Stripe to Easy Pay Direct. Gotcha. <clears throat> I have Thanks. a local payment processor um here in Florida that's really good. They pretty much focus on um the high ticket space and coaching and stuff like that. That's sick that I can connect y'all with. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll message you on school. Perfect. Cool. By the way, um, Harvey and well, everyone here, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys what we're building and what we just built out for you guys. So you guys can see how you can keep track of your sales calls better, especially when they're coming in from leads. So can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just made the sales tracking template. Okay. So this is essentially how I'm going to recommend each and every one of you keep track of the opt-ins that you get from your ads. Okay. You, it's very simple. You use it with opt-in date, which should automatically be uh, ported in once you set up Zapier. Their name that's going to be ported in here, their email, their phone number. If you've dialed them, meaning you've actually outbound dialed them to get them on a call once they've opted in, right? And then the outcome, if you booked them as a, as a strategy call, if they were unqualified, if you're going to put them in your, your CRM to nurture them, or if they're not interested, this is all like the leads, right? Leads that are coming in. And then we have this call tracker here where these are where you're going to log your calls, like the actual calls that you have on your calendar. And you're going to log them with if they've showed up, if they no-showed, if they rescheduled, canceled, right? Or if they're qualified or unqualified, and then if you won them as a client or they lost them as a client, right? If you didn't close them, the revenue you got and the cash you collected, plus the call recording link and the call reflection here. This way, every single call you have with the leads is tracked. And there's all call recordings here. This is like Fathom, for example, which I recommend getting. And then you can have notes of each call. And this allows us as a community to be able to, you know, and me and my team to be able to review your calls better because you know, the biggest thing that everyone really is running into right now that they're they're saying is like lead quality, lead quality, lead quality. Well, the reality is, is it's just colder leads that they're not used to closing from warm trap. Like everyone's used to closing warm leads that are laydowns, right? Cold's a little bit of a different story. So like I was reviewing another uh, person's calls the other week and I was just like, it just, it just wasn't, wasn't a good sales call. So this is how we're going to be able to review your sales calls uh, and how you're going to be able to review your sales calls or get them reviewed because they're all right here. Right. So you're going to log all these calls right here. It's going to automatically port all this information in to this KPI monthly tracker, which is going to show you how many calls you had, how many sales you made, how much revenue you made, how much cash you collected, what the revenue per call is, meaning every single time you take a call, how much revenue you make, 
how much cash you make per call. So that way, when you take a call, you know, each call is worth this much to your business, what your close ratio is, what your shows, reschedules, canceled, blah, 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 all that stuff, all the percentages, all of this is like uh, basically automatically, you know, calculated for you. And then what your true ROI is going to be too. So like this way you have one sheet that you can use for your sales tracking. Okay. And then we also have, I think, uh, Harvey, you were asking this earlier, the, the objections and rebuttals, right? Where we, where you can easily put here, like, um, whatever the objection was for that person. It's like, uh, I want to talk to my spouse first before making a decision. And then what's the rebuttal you put? And then what would you score that rebuttal at a scale of one to 10? Like one being the shittiest rebuttal you could have ever said. And like, you messed up that deal. And then 10 being like, oh no, this was a, this was a ninja, ninja rebuttal here. And then you could put a better answer. A better answer would have been blah, blah, blah. Right. That way it helps you on the sales to, to handle these objections better, get better with your rebuttals. And then any questions that they're asking you on the calls too. What happens if this doesn't work? You know, how much do I have to spend on my budget? Yada, yada, yada. Same thing. And then, yeah, I think that last thing is like the expenses here. So like, for example, uh, how much you're spending on ads and then what your tech stack is, for example, if you use, if you use HubSpot, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you use HubSpot or if you use Hyros, whatever your tech stack costs you plus ad spend, and then it obviously calculates your, your oh. true ROI right here from the calls you take to show you what your ROI is. Um, does that make sense? Mm hmm Will this replace, uh, I think, the tracking sheet uh, that I got from like WeTube? No. So the funnel, tr the funnel tracking sheet is marketing. That's where you put your marketing data. Because again, you need a marketing tracking sheet because marketing is different than sales. Marketing is yeah. telling you how much it's costing you to get a lead and a call. And then this is telling you how much it's costing you or how much money you're making from the calls you're taking. And if those calls are actually qualified or if they're answering or if they're not, and then you know, what the call recordings are here so we can review them and see where the bottleneck is for you. Because this is going to allow us to be able to, to truly like audit your sales process and see, okay, well, dude, all these leads are coming in, but you're not even calling them. All right. It's like, well, that's step one. Make sure you call the leads as soon as possible. And then after you've done that, you know, make sure you're taking the calls and you're recording the calls and how you feel on the calls. And that's going to show you what these numbers are. So the marketing one's going to be separate, uh, man, just to, just to answer your question. You're going to have two sheets, two sheets that are going to help you with scaling your business, your funnel tracking sheet and your sales tracking sheet. We try to make this one as easy as possible for everything to be in one place. This should be done uh, basically daily, like daily manually. Uh, well, no, the, the, yes, you don't, you can, um, you can do this manually to start. Uh, but we're putting a training together that's going to be literally done next week inside the community, inside the classroom. That's going to show you how to how to automate this part right here for the leads. But this call tracking sheet will have to be done manually, and it should be done manually because mm -hmm. especially if you have as you have um, a sales team, right? Like after you get off the calls, once you've done this pro yourself and you've proven you can get off the calls, you're going to want to have them do this so you can keep track of their calls. Awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So I just wanted to show you guys that because this is something we're working on because of all the issues we've seen everyone running into with like quality. It's like, okay, well, here's how we're going to audit that and help you guys with that. So it's going to be pretty sick. I'll, I'll share this with you guys um, next week as well. Once I'm done filming the training on it. Hey, Brian. Um, quick question. So what do you guys typically, what levers are you typically pulling? I guess I'm assuming in the ads to like deal with um, the financially unqualified people. Talk to me. To, to, what's what's happening in the business that's making you ask this question? Um. Yeah. So I mean, YouTube ads. So this is we're running multiple channels. Um. But YouTube ads is one of them, obviously. Um. And the the we're getting a decent number of calls, right? But a lot of them work. A lot of them are ending up being canceled. Um. Just because like like twenty percent, twenty five percent are being canceled because they just they say they don't have the money. Um. And then after they get on the call. We found out more of them don't have the money, right? Obviously, it's a higher ticket program. It's a biz op program, right? But um, I'm just curious, like, what have you typically tweaked in the past for, for this stuff? Yeah, well, with what is what are the... Do you have any metrics to pull up right now just so I can see what your kind of rates are, like in terms of show-up rates, qualified rates, like um, any data we can go off of? So here uh, we have our 
Let me pull it over here. YouTube ads, 24% mm -hmm. cancel rate. Um, and we're just getting a, we're just making, we're just, just a very low offer rate, right? 40%, um, 20% close rates. All right. So like a lot, we're not making a lot of offers compared to other platforms because we, one, we have, cause with like Instagram, right? We, we have a, um, what do you call it? We have like the pre-qualifying in the, in the DM setting, but YouTube ad, it's like just, you know, whatever they say in the application. So yeah, we're so not so able Facebook to. Facebook ads offer rates 84%, but YouTube's 40% right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the cancel rates as well, it's zero. <laughs> Whereas 24 on YouTube ads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now we're, we are making tweaks in the ads and vsl like there's a lot to, a lot of work to do there um but i'm just curious like if there's anything specific like maybe in the ad messaging or in the application that you'd like tweak to, to mm -hmm. fix this yeah well let's look at that so third third you spent 30 3400 you've closed you've made four offers you've closed two of them you've collected 6k in cash so your cash is almost 2x and your gross is uh four thousand. Yeah, that's still pretty good to start, even with the the yeah, yeah, the offer rate, huh? Yeah, it's that's low. Yeah, now this low. is just a I'm actually not sure. Let me look the previous months, right? Just to see where we're at. I don't have offer rate from the previous months because I just came in and set up this tracking, so I actually don't know, but like I mean April. 35% cancel rate, right? Um, 32 calls taken, eight closes. And that's not too bad, actually. So I don't I don't actually know the metrics before May, unfortunately. So I don't know if this is like a blip, like a bad month or something. But um, I mean, last actually last month, we didn't make, I don't think we even made any sales with YouTube ads. Sorry, I wasn't even looking at the full, I wasn't looking at YouTube ads. Um, yeah, we didn't even make any sales in March, made a couple last month so okay so this is for may so far yeah yeah okay. yeah just yeah this box here is me um well there's a few things you can do but i mean what have you tried already um i'll be honest like i've i've just been mostly swinging at his instagram at the, at the instagram side of things um youtube has i'm starting to look into youtube a little bit because we've had outside help come in right um with the, and like just come in for like the vsl um we're starting to look at the youtube ads but i'm just curious if there's any like just kind of quick wins <laughs> i could i could pull um pull from this call but um but so we haven't tried a whole lot i'll, I'll say i'll be honest because i just kind of came in a couple of months ago didn't touch youtube ads so here's here's what i've learned and again i've learned this uh so this is this is a few things you could try but it's all it's all related to the sales side first so right like if the offer rate's below 80%, it's worth looking into. So like, you know, number one, the closer is afraid to roll the wrong people or be aggressive with people who are financially struggling. Struggling, And this could be it, right? Because you're selling B2C, it's biz op. So like mm -hmm. most of these people, they're looking to make money because they don't have much money, right? So he he just might be gun shy. That could be the thing you gotta, you gotta review. Number two, the closer doesn't actually know who's qualified and like who 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 is qualified. Right. So you might be over disqualifying on the sales calls or you might be canceling them if they look like they're, you know, they, they, they're not going to be a good fit. So that could be another yeah. thing. Uh, the other thing is just, he's not offering to people that are financially struggling or tough prospects to maintain, you know, their good close ratio, which is something that it seems like this business is, uh, you know, pretty sophisticated if you're running YouTube ads and Facebook ads at the same time, plus doing Instagram. Uh, but yeah, he might just not want to be offering it to, to make his numbers look bad as well. So the solution here would be to manage coach and obviously lead them better from the sales side of things, which I don't know if that's your job or not, but I would look into that more. I know. Yeah. Um, so the, I don't think the offer rate is low necessarily in terms of like they're, they're not. Um, so, I mean, that's one thing we've been working on. We are pitching more often now, but I think it's, it's, I think we are kind of um, a little too, aggressive with the cancels um because we i mean recently we actually just closed a guy who said he had no money but they called him or texted him got him on a call and closed him <laughs> um so i think that says a lot about like um problem with that process we're i still need to fix that but like they're using like the calendly routing right now to, to qualify leads and it's like it's very automated it's not a lot of like it's very hard to there's no application or anything before 
No, no. Well, the Calendly routing, it's like, I don't know if you've used it for any clients, but like it's... It, yeah, we it, used it, to use it ourselves. Yeah. yeah. What do you like, do you mind going into like pros and cons of that and like why you switch? Like what was the biggest? Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, you're just adding more friction, right? You had an application from Typeform before, routing's a lot easier. You can use logic to just automatically, you know, not get people that are doing less than 10K out. Um, so it just adds more friction basically is, is the easiest answer. Uh, but what you guys are currently doing right now is optimizing for calls. You just want to get more calls. So you're going to have to have to manually cancel all those calls unless you take all those calls. But the problem, if that's that's like you do Calendly with routing using Calendly if you have like a volume issue. Like you don't you don't have any volume, you just go right to call. There was there was a problem in the past where there were there's like I think a couple of guys who basically just um botted like the the Calendly, <laughs> so they had to set up the routing. Like they just basically set up a spam. Um, um oh yeah, someone was just spam like dosing you guys basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, so the, yeah, I mean, do you you would want so what you could do from the marketing side is like you know with. With B2C, it's just, I mean, here's the thing. You're, you're still doing a really good cash. You just need to get it to like a, more of a 3X. But mm -hmm. the way you can get it more throughput with qualified uh, is you would want to add a little bit more friction potentially. If, but at the same time, like you're not spending much on YouTube ads for the month. Like if this way, if you've spent 15K and your, your numbers are still the same, that would be pretty, pretty interesting. But 3K to get a 2X, it's like, okay, I would want to see if those numbers stick after another 9K. So yeah, it was, um, so we spent 9K last month, 14K the month before, but we, we toned it down because there was a shitty closer, um, but we switched it up, switched him out and <laughs> the month we spent 14K, there's zero sales, um, but that's because of that closer. Um, so, so now like, the new closer is in and he's closed too. Yeah, he's he's great. Like he's still learning. Like, bro, I would see that's the but, thing. Yeah, I, I don't even know if I don't even know if it's a problem. Like the closer yeah. was closing, and then if you spent and he's closing now, and you're you're cash positive, so like, I think yeah. the problem though is like there's a huge difference between like because all the closes are from like eighty percent of the closes so far are from Instagram. Um, like there's clear quality discrepancy between the two. Obviously, we're nurturing them more with Instagram, right, and DMs and stuff, but like. I'm just, I'm just curious, like, is this just an eight? Is this just how, how it is when you run cold ads? You just got to deal with the, the less pretty numbers. Well, again, I, I, it's yes for B2C, but also, I mean, yeah. your, your, I think it was just the sales issue. Like if, if you've got this other guy in and he's now closing, the other guy wasn't like the other guy just probably wasn't good. And now this guy's good and he's coming in and he's just closing. And so like, is it a marketing issue? I don't think so. I mean, it seems like you're getting enough volume, right? Like you could add type form and an application. I think that could be could be useful for you longer term for the business to add a little yeah. bit more friction and have that do the routing for you and then just go to schedule once or Calendly like we do. That could help. But I, I truly feel like it was just a closing issue. And usually that's always it. It's just a sales issue. It's never usually marketing. Yeah. So yeah, there's like there's you that want gray more, area. Yeah, if you Sorry, want more ahead, tactical ahead. like steps, it's like, okay, what I would do if this was me, I would say, well, look, last three months we spent this much on YouTube. The results were pretty piss poor because the last guy we had was just not good. This guy, better. He's closing. He's closed already two of them. Let's give him some more at-bats. Let's scale up a little bit on YouTube and see if the results are still the same and then start optimizing that, right? So again, how can you start making these small tweaks? Maybe it's, you know, it's not being shy about canceling these people if they, because people lie all the time on applications. Like I, I guarantee you, we have a bunch of people just sitting in our less than 10 K a month application routing that are just lying and they they actually have money. Um, and just, just fishing for those deals. But if it was me, I don't even think it's enough spend to say it's not working. Uh, the last closer, it wasn't, but now it's like, this guy just needs more calls. And I, and I, YouTube is, YouTube is and, and can be a better qualified source for for traffic if you if you have the right closer, but if he's just not going to yeah. close, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So just basically reopen the flow a little bit, right? Don't be too strict on the cancels. Make more offers and see what happens.
Yeah. And then I would say, look, and I mean, this is going to be a test, right? This is going to be a test. We're going to test this. We're going to see if the closer, uh, if it was really a closing issue, if it is, that's great because now we can spend more on YouTube that can supplement Facebook. And then we can start slowly dialing in the, the YouTube optimization process next, but you would eventually want to have, um, some friction. Yeah. So you'd want to have the application at scale. Gotcha. Cool. I have a All question. Right. Yep. Um, uh what are your thoughts on like on the Calendly form where you ask questions? Um, what are your thoughts of just like a straight up question saying, do you have like, so for my offer, I'm thinking of making the price 5,800. So one of the questions could be like, do you have at least 5k saved up in the bank? Is that too straightforward? I think people are just going to lie. And they're also going to probably like, yeah, I mean, you could ask that. Um, actually, we have we have questions for you guys to ask this. Hold on. Let me just pull this up for you guys. Oh, perfect. Yeah, let me just uh, give you guys what we what we what we do here. So in the VSL funnel and set up an automation training, there is this document. So we have example questions here. Let me just send this to you. This is inside the VSL and funnel setup automation training, by the way. So let me just oh, perfect. Copy this. Um, if you go to example questions. So this is for, you know, like that's example. B2C or B2B. Yeah. Then we have B2C. No, we have B2C right here. This is B2C. Oh, okay. Okay. B2B Perfect. is just like these extra two ones over here. So B2C would be like, yeah, where do you want to be six to 12 months from now? What, what below the best describes your goal? Like, uh, if you're accepted to work with us, how soon can you get started? You know, it's, 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 uh, this can help you, but. I would read through this and see how you can, how it compares right now. Again, I don't know if most of your guys' problems is an application issue more than it is a sales issue. So the last mm -hmm. thing I want you guys to do is come here and change all your application questions and say, oh, it has to be this strict. Because the reality is most of the time, it's just pushing harder on the sales to get people that might not be as qualified over the, over the hump to invest in themselves, especially if they're B2C, right? Just like mm -hmm. it in B2B sometimes too. Like the thing, the thing that most people do wrong is they try to just make sure that every lead that comes through answers these specific questions, yes, or making this much, or they're not on, on the call. And the only reason why we do that is if we're not confident in our sales process. Whereas if you get a good closer in, you know, and, and he's good, and he just he's just a true sales guy, or we just get better at sales ourselves, you can close these people that aren't that aren't at the best deals. So take a look at this, but I wouldn't change everything in your business based off of this. These are just examples. Okay. Yeah. My, the lead quality I've had has not been bad at all. I just wanted to pick your brain because that's what I do in my questionnaire. I say, do you have, uh, do you have at least 3k in the bank right now liquid, uh, that you could invest? Yeah. And it's yeah. Been, been doing fine, but I just wanted to pick your brain on that. Yeah. You can just, I think we say, um, do you, I think we just, we don't even ask that specific question. Like if I show you ours, I think we just ask like, are you are you financially able to invest in your business or something like that? It's like uh, let's go to application. Uh, yeah, last uh, hold on. Where is the application for paid ads? Yeah, how willing are you able? How willing are you? How willing? It should be say how willing and able are you to invest in the growth of your business right now? I would. It would just. You could be even be something like that. I have the financial resources to invest in my personal growth. And starting my own, you know, Amazon, you know, whatever e-commerce dropshipping, whatever the case is, or uh, I don't have the financial resources, or I have, I don't have them right now, but I can, I can find them, you know. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So I have a client right now. We're doing like the fractional CMO and everything for them. We send out a daily email for them to go fill out an application. We're getting about four to five applications a day. Um. But when the setter calls them right away, they just don't answer the phone. They don't text back. They don't fucking do anything. Um, some of them even think it's for like a free training that they're opting into. And it's a 14, 15 question application that they're filling out. So I'm just wondering if you have any ideas on like what we could do a little bit differently um, to see if we can get these people to actually pick up the phone or at least text back and give some sort of communication because i mean they're they're opening the emails they're reading them they're clicking the link and they're filling out the application but they're just not answering after that 
Interesting. So they're giving you all the stuff that sends they, they're interested, but they're just not like. They're yeah. Just not. <laughs> yeah. Huh. What have you tried besides that? Uh, today, I told the setter that if he follows up and they don't answer, send them a text message saying that, hey, um, Devin just recorded a free training that is going to show you uh, on demand print, or an, yeah, an on demand um, e comm store. Uh, do you want me to send the link? Just reply yes. So that way we can at least just try to get them to message back for something. Um, but otherwise, we've called them, text them, and emailed them again after they filled out the application. And the setters are usually pretty quick. Like within five minutes, they're picking up the phone and calling them and double dialing and shit like that. Yeah. I mean, that sounds... Are you verifying the numbers? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Who's the target audience? Uh, it's a biz op offer for print on demand. Hmm. And I mean, we just, we did a 500K launch last month uh, with 250K cash collected for, from like the, the same list and, and everything that we've been sending to, uh, but we filled that offer up. So now we're just pushing to fill out an application. We were doing book a call, but we just would get way too many people not show up to the calls. Uh, so we stopped doing the book a call and just are now forcing them to do an application and then pushing them to um, like the setters just reaching out. What we are going to do is uh, Alan Sultanik wrote a VSL for them. So we're going to, instead of pushing them to the application, we're just going to start pushing some of the emails to the VSL and see if the quality and everything is better on that instead of, all of them came from webinars. So they've all opted into a webinar before. They came from affiliate deal uh, where the affiliates kind of promoted this client's company and everything there. So, but I mean, we're getting a really good open rate. Everybody's engaged and we're getting applications. They're just not picking up the phone, which is weird to me. <laughs> yeah. Pickup rates. Let me get back. I don't, I don't have an exact answer because it sounds like you're doing all the things right already, but that's, that's interesting. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Let me ask. Let me ask a few people because that's a rare problem. Usually, yeah. usually you just don't have enough applications, but you have applications that are just not they're not entering after they've applied. Yep. Did you try like looking? Did you look at the numbers you're dialing from? I haven't. Uh, I believe they dial from Allaware. Um but I'll, I'll have them look at the numbers and see if maybe something could be going on there. Yeah, that I mean, one thing I've heard is, sorry, go ahead. That, that, that can happen. Ryan, Ryan, I think you might be saying it as well. Sometimes my setter will tell me that the people that he's calling are telling him that we're calling a spam. Like Alloware sometimes has that issue, but I don't know how that happens. It might, I don't know if that's it though. You probably get, you probably get told that. Okay. Yeah. Like some numbers could be blacklisted or just, this shouldn't be affecting like, this shouldn't be screwing up all your calls, but like if it's not like a local number, sometimes people don't pick up. But that shouldn't be like a you know ninety percent. No, are you, no are you sending out like a that. text from that before the call? Yeah, because there's so many robocallers these days, man. Like that prep really helps. It's what you are cool. Yeah, after they call, if they don't answer, they send them a text right away saying that hey, this is Andy from Scup. Uh, I just try to give you a call. I'm looking at your application right now. I have a few questions. Um, you guys are running ads for Scup. Yeah, cool. That was really useful this week, Brian. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'm gonna shoot. Uh, that was really useful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, hundred percent. Your time, Brian. Yeah, hundred percent. Have a good weekend, guys.